In this video, we'll have a look at adding textures to a mesh, as well as how you can generate custom colors to fit the layout of your terrain. But first, this video is sponsored by Jason Wyman. He's the creator of the amazing Unity 3D Masterclass, which takes you all the way from the very fundamentals of game dev to using Unity on a professional level. It will teach you the principles of solid game architecture and how to build a variety of game types. On top of that, you will also get familiar with packages like Cinemachine, Timeline, and Pro Builder. What makes this course unique is that you get to work along with other students and get live one-on-one -on -one help from Jason himself. It's also possible to extend the course to learn VR development, and he even offers one full year money back guarantee. At the end, you will have made three games and have the opportunity to customize and show off your work to the class. So if you want to become a pro Unity developer, I definitely recommend you click the link in the description and get started. Also, special thanks to Make a Game, Andrew Kalinenko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Alexander Blair, and Infinity PBR for their support on Patreon. Now, at the end of the last video, we talked about adding multiple layers of noise to make a terrain more interesting. I've gone ahead and added two more layers of noise on top of the one we created in the last video, and as you can see, the result is already so much nicer. In fact, it's such a common technique to use that it has a name, octaves. Definitely let us know if you want to learn more about how octaves work and how to apply them to your terrain. Until then, you can check out the links in the description to learn more. For now, let's add some color to our terrain. So let's start by adding a custom material to our mesh. To do this, let's select our mesh generator, and here you can see that there's a slot for a material. So under a project, we can go create, material, and let's call it something like terrain material. We then select our mesh generator and drag that right in. And now when we hit play, we should be able to control our terrain using this material. We can, for example, tint it to add color or control the metallicness and smoothness of the surface. Pretty cool. We can also try and add a texture. So I've gone ahead and imported the Brachys logo. And if we drag this into the albedo channel, we can see that something weird is happening here. The logo itself is nowhere to be seen, but the environment does take on this blue color from the texture. The reason why this is happening is that we haven't told our terrain how to display textures. In other words, in order to show a texture, we first need to define the UVs. UVs is a set of data that tells our object how to display textures. The job of UVs is to map points on our object to points on a 2D image. For 3D objects like a cube, we refer to the process of making the UVs as unwrapping, because we are essentially unwrapping our object to lay it out on a 2D plane. However, in our case, this process is super easy, since our grid is already created flat. So all we need to do is go through each of our vertices and map it to our image. Since UV coordinates go between 0 and 1, we can't just use the position of the vertex directly. We need to first take the x and divide it by the x size, and then take the z and divide it by the z size. The result is a value between 0 and 1 for all the coordinates. That's our UVs! So to do this in code, we can open up our mesh generator script. And at the top here, we now need another array. So this is going to be an array of vector twos, which is going to store our UVs. We can then scroll down to where we create our shape. And in here, you can see first we create our vertices, then we create our triangles. And then down here, we can define our UVs. Now, since we're going to have a UV for each vertex, we can go ahead and set our UVs array equal to a new vector2 array, and then simply give it the same size as our vertex array. So we'll use vertices.length. And because it has the same size, we can also use the same for loop. So let's just copy the for loop for our vertices and paste it down here. And of course, we need to remove the code regarding our vertices. And now we have two for loops that will go through every UV in our array. And with this, we can simply go UVs and then I equals a new vector two. And instead of just inputting X and Z here, this is where we're going to do the calculation we talked about. So we're going to go X divided by X size, comma Z divided by Z size. And since all of these variables are currently integers, we need to explicitly say that we want this calculation to use decimal points. So at the beginning of each calculation here, we'll write float in parentheses in order to specify that we want to cast this value into a float. And that is actually all we need to do to define our UVs. Now we just need to assign them to our mesh. So in our update mesh method, we'll go mesh.uv equals our UVs array. And if we save that and go into Unity and play, voila, right away we can see that the Brachys logo is indeed showing up. Awesome. And we can of course go in and play around with all of the material settings and it's gonna work just fine. Or we can change the texture to something else. The possibilities are pretty much endless. 
However, this is fine if you want to overlay some kind of image on top of your mesh. But most of the time when doing stuff like procedural terrain, you probably want to create colors that vary depending on the layout of your terrain. Luckily, we can do this fairly easily using vertex colors. Just like we can define UVs for each of our vertices, we can also define a color. The cool thing about this is that we basically loop over all of our vertices and depending on the height, we assign it a color. To define what colors to display at what heights, we can use a gradient. Gradients in Unity are super handy. They allow us to input a number between 0 and 1 and it will then return the color at that point. The color data is then stored in the mesh and can be displayed using a vertex shader. So to do this in our code, we'll go into our script. Let's go to the top and instead of defining a vector2 for the UVs, let's define a color array for all of our vertex colors. Then if we go into our create shape method, we're currently setting the UVs to be equal to the same length as the vertex array. And in fact, we want to do the same thing for colors. Again, this is because we have one color for each vertex. Of course, we need to change the type from vector2 to color, but that's pretty much it. Now, to loop over all of the colors, we can use the same two for loops, we just need to get rid of this piece of code. And we can then set colors i equal to, and this is where we want to specify our gradient. So let's go to the top and let's create a public gradient, and let's just call it gradient. Then back in our for loop, we can simply set the color equal to gradient.evaluate, and this then takes in the height of the terrain at this point. And we can of course get that from the vertex array. So let's create a float height. Let's set it equal to vertices and we'll go i dot y. And that's the height of this particular vertice. So we can simply pass in this height to our gradient function. And that should in theory work. However, there's one issue with this and I'm going to show you that in a sec. For now, we can just go down here and just like we set our UVs, we can go mesh dot colors and set it equal to our colors array. So if we now save this code and go into Unity, we can see that we now have this gradient. And if we click on it, it brings up the gradient editor. Here we can define all bunch of colors along the height of our terrain. I'm just gonna make it go from black to white for now. And if we were to hit play right now, you can see that there are definitely a few problems. The first one is that we are not currently using a shader that is able to display these vertex colors. This is just a standard shader that is meant to use with textures. The other problem is the height of our terrain. If we go in and look at our terrain here, first of all, it's floating above our grid. And second of all, it's really, really large. So the heights of our terrain here might vary between say three and 20. And this is not really good when working with gradients because when inputting a value on a gradient, it needs to go between zero and one. So how do we take this height variable that is currently all over the place and normalize it to make it only go between zero and one? Well, we can actually do that fairly easily, but we need to know the minimum and maximum height of our terrain. So let's go to the top here and let's create two private variables. The first one is going to be a float with the minimum terrain height. And the second one is going to be another float with the maximum terrain height. Then when we loop over all of our vertices, we can add a few lines. First, we'll say if the Y coordinate is greater than our maximum terrain height, well, then we want to set our maximum terrain height equal to that Y coordinate. And similarly, if y is less than our minimum terrain height, well, then we can set minimum terrain height equal to y. So this will make sure that as we go over our terrain and generate all the vertices, it's going to also update our max and minimum terrain height. And so when we generate our colors, we can now normalize this height. To do this, we'll use something called math.inverse loop. And this first takes in our minimum height, then our maximum height. And then finally, it takes in the height of the terrain at this point. So vertices i dot y. And this is in fact going to give us a value between zero and one. Pretty cool. So we can now save that and go into Unity. However, when we play, it's still not going to look very cool because again, our shader isn't displaying these vertex colors. So now we're basically left with three options. We would either go online and find a vertex shader to use, we could also write one ourselves, but shader writing can be a bit confusing. So luckily there's a third option and that is using ShaderGraph. So those of you who haven't used it, ShaderGraph is a visual tool for creating shaders and we can really, really, really easily use it to set up a vertex shader. So to use ShaderGraph, we need to set up our project to use the lightweight render pipeline. To do this, we'll go window and select package manager. 
We'll then go under all and somewhere in here, we can find the lightweight render pipeline. Make sure to install it if it isn't already. Once that's done, we can go to our project and create a rendering lightweight pipeline asset. And we'll just hit enter here. There are some settings here you can adjust for the graphics of your game. However, I'm just going to leave mine as default. We then go edit, project settings, graphics, and drag in this lightweight asset. And now our project is using the lightweight render pipeline. It's that simple. We can now go window, package manager, and if you don't already see shader graph here, you can find it under all and simply install it. And that's it. We can now go under our project and hit create, go under shader, and let's select PBR graph. Let's name it the terrain shader and let's double click it to open it up in shader graph. And we don't need this to be full screen. So I'm just going to dark it here by the scene view. And as you can see, we currently have one node here. That's the PBR master node. And this is where we can change properties for our material. And one of these properties is the albedo. In other words, the basic color of our object. So all we need to do is add a node that will get our vertex color and then link it to the albedo. So let's hit space. Let's search for vertex color. And here we go, that's a vertex color node. It's simply going to get the color of the current vertex. We then take the color of that vertex and drag it into the albedo. And that's pretty much it. I'm not kidding, that's all we need to do. We can now hit save asset, go to our terrain material and make sure to select this shader. So we'll go and select our terrain shader. And now when we play, Boom! Our gradient is now showing on our mesh. In fact, because I'm currently updating the terrain every frame, I can adjust it in real time. So I'm going to go into the gradient here and we could try and make it look a bit like a real terrain. So at the bottom here, we'll add some water. So some kind of light blue here. Then we'll add some grass. So some kind of a bit darker green. We can maybe add some mountain-like rock formation. So we'll add a darker gray. And we can add some more dark gray, something like that. And then we can have snow on top. There we go. And it kind of already looks like a terrain. Of course, you can play around with this as much as you'd like in order to create different looking landscapes. But you can see just how easy it is to start doing this on your own. And if you find something you like, we can simply right click on the mesh generator, hit copy component, stop playing and hit paste component values. And now we've saved it in our gradient. Amazing. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. Also, don't forget to check out the Unity 3D Masterclass. Simply click the link in the description to get started. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October and a special thanks to Andrew Kalininko, Art Armin, True VR Systems, Simmer IO, Alexander Blair, Cheetah 3D, Jeff Johnson, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Sheriff Abdullah, Faisal Marify, Fang Sulong, Leo Lasset, Vincent Van Skewer, Reyes D, Derek Kimskirk, Ronan, Tima Polderbach, Bruins Cat, Naoki Uwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Pakum Bernia, Erasmus, Robert Bund, Cor Jackson, James P, Anthony Patton, Kyo Swedeski, and Abrisi. You guys rock.